So I'll be the first to admit I'm in avoidance mode right now. We have Project Daily Driver over at the shop. She runs great. Uh, and it's time to do the body work. And I'm just, you have no idea how much I dread doing body and paint work. So it's like, let me play hooky for a little bit and we'll do something different. Let's, you guys love the theory videos, right? So let's do a quick theory video. Um, and ignition timing. Ignition timing, we talk a lot about it. And it's like one of the key components, one of the key uh, you know, the things to engine performance. So there are certain relationships that I never hear talked about. And that's what I wanted to go into with this. Um, and it has to do with like, what is the optimum ignition timing? How do you determine optimum igni ignition timing uh, based on the characteristics or the, or the, or the, uh, the architecture of an engine? Now, obviously there are many factors, uh, boost, nitrous, compression ratio, fuel intended use, that will all uh, dictate that your timing falls into a certain range. But the relationship of the engine or the, the relationship of engine size, piston size, to optimum ignition timing is kind of fixed. So basically, let's just say an engine, a normally aspirated engine runs best at 36 degrees, uh, total advance, and uh, you're going to boost it, or you're going to throw nitrous at it, uh, that same engine is going to run best at 30 degrees or 28 degrees. So the range will change, but relationships will always kind of stay the same. And here's the example. This is, this is where this comes from. Uh, and the best, the best example I can think of is Garlitz, Don Garlitz. 1964. Uh, he was at the top of his game, and he was running 392 Hemis. Uh, Chrysler at that time introduces the 426. They give him Garlitz a, a 426, and they say, here, make this thing run. So using the same tune-up that they had on the 392, they applied a roll to the 426. Same blower, same pump, same mag, same timing, same everything. And they throw it in the car, and the 426 will not run. It's just, it's a, it's a dog and he keeps going back to the 392. So what happens is, at some point, Garlitz gets disgusted with this thing. The standard tune-up for a 392 Chrysler back in the day uh, was 32 to 35 degrees total advance. On a Hail Mary pass, like, you know, all the marbles are on the line, so last round, you know, you gotta make it, they tweak it as far as 40 degrees, but at 40 degrees, the 392 became a hand grenade. It would split the cylinder walls, it would throw the crank on the ground, all sorts of violent detonation, but it would get the job done, it would make the horsepower. When they ran the 426 in that 32, 35 degree range, it didn't make any power at all, it was just a stone. Garlitz, pissed off at this thing, takes the magneto and just gives it a twist, right? Up over 40 degrees. They send it, the thing comes alive. It makes power like there's no tomorrow. They keep creeping up on the mag until they get to around 50 degrees. And this thing is like that 50 degrees on the 426 work with 55 degrees on the 426 worked out to be about approximately the same as 40 degrees on the 392. What's the moral of the story here? Well, the engines are essentially the same. Same style combustion chamber, even though there is a difference in, in the, the total CC, but the compression ratio that they were using was approximately the same. Same type of camshaft, same fuel, same everything else. The only difference, the only functional difference between those two engines was the bore size. The 392 at four inch, the 426 at four and a quarter inch. And what that meant was that the optimum amount of ignition lead this thing needed was based almost entirely on how much real estate the flame front had to cover across the top of the piston. That really, now what does that have to do with like what we do today? His ancient times and his top fuel cars. How does it supply to street cars? The same essential principle remains. The optimum amount of ignition lead is based on the amount of real estate that the piston has to cover, or the flame front has to cover across the piston. So here with this example, these three pistons. This one here is a slant six. Now, normally aspirated, gasoline, carburetor, average compression, like around 10 to 1 compression or thereabouts. Optimum timing on this 3.4 inch bore engine is approximately 28 degrees. This one here is a 318, 3.91 inch bore. Cool, let's call it 4 inch bore, a 4 inch bore engine. This one here will make the same power, have the same characteristics, optimum timing, as this one here at 28 degrees. This one here will want like 32, 33 degrees. 
And then you get to this one here. This is a 400. This is a 20, a 20 over 400. So 4.34. This is a 4.36 bore piston. And this one here will make optimum timing at around 36 degrees. So all else being equal, 28 degrees, 33 degrees, 36 degrees. The only difference, similar combustion chambers, same fuel, same type of cam, same type of application, but it's the bore size that dictates optimum timing. So now, obviously, combustion chamber type, uh, is it a quench motor or not, type of fuel that you're going to run, application, is it boosted, is it nitrous, is it, all of those things will affect what your, your optimum timing is going to be. But that optimum timing is going to fall into a range that's dictated by the bore size of the piston. So, that's it. I hope you got something out of that. Now I'm going to go back to the shop and uh, suffer with the body work. See you tomorrow.